All right, hello guys. Today in this video, we're gonna be talking about assembly language and this video is gonna be just an introduction to assembly language. Assembly language. Um, just some background information about assembly language. It is a low level programming language, meaning that um, it is closer to machine code binary than a high level programming language. And that also means that each instruction, so each instruction of assembly language performs one task, one simple, relatively simple task. This could be something like adding two numbers or storing something at a particular address in the memory, etc. And uh, since it's a low level programming language, it also means that it is machine dependent. Now, how is assembly language machine dependent? That is, ke, what you can do with assembly language on a particular computer is dependent on that particular machine's instru instruction set, right? So it is dependent on the instruction set. Now, what is the instruction set of a computer? It's basically uh, a set of instructions that a computer can execute so stuff that it can do if you try to make it do something that it's that is not in its instruction set it won't be able to do that right so that is how assembly language limits you to work within the instruction set that the computer has so therefore that makes it machine dependent so let's take a look at what an assembly language instruction actually looks like so just give me a second here so let's say we have an instruction that is something like l uh, d d one o three right so the l d d one o three now this is what a typical assembly language instruction looks like a l instruction and it has two parts so the first part right here is the opcode this is known as the opcode and the second part right here is the operand it is the operand and these two parts work together in conjunction to tell the computer exactly what to do there are just a disclaimer there are some instructions which do not require an operand but every single instruction definitely has an opcode and we'll talk about this uh, in a bit more detail in future videos so the opcode the opcode basically tells the computer what to do so are you adding are you storing it somewhere are you incrementing decrementing uh, something like that the operand tells us what to operate on if you're adding what are you adding if you're storing where are you storing it um if you're fetching something where are you fetching it from so that is what the operand is for so let's talk a little bit a little bit more about the actual opcode so for each computer's instruction set, um, I'll just erase this opcode stuff, sorry, operand stuff right now while we're talking about the opcode. So for each computer's instruction set, each opcode is mapped to its uh, machine code, machine code hex or binary equivalent. So hex or binary. And you'll see this often in questions where they show you, they give you like a table um, something like this. Here's the description of the command, the opcode. Here's the actual opcode, and here they give you like a binary equivalent. So something like 1011. And um, that is also what happens. It's not 1011 in real life situations. It has to be longer than that because there are a lot more instructions. But in tests, in questions, you'll often see okay, one LDD instruction, for example, is mapped to a binary equivalent of 10. One, one. And keep in mind, okay, computers can only understand binary. They can't understand assembly language. So even though assembly language is a low-level programming instruct, sorry, it's a low-level programming language, it still needs to be translated to machine code. So when you, for example, have that example instruction that we had, which was something like LDD103, when you actually assemble this program and get it ready to be executed, this might as well turn into something like 1011 and whatever the binary equivalent of 
uh, one or three years I can't remember at the moment right so uh, that's the opcode right so now we talked about the opcode let's move on to the operand so just give me a second and I'll erase everything here right so the operand is the stuff that's being operated on so let's say in the case when i said ldd103 ldd103 um ldd is basically direct loading what it means is take whatever is in the address 103 store it in the accumulator directly load into the accumulator right so in this case 103 was the operand now there are different uh types of operand um, not types exactly but right now our operand um, as the LDD opcode requires is a this is a memory address so 103 memory address this might be the um, decimal equivalent but um, it is the memory address so LDD 103 103 is the memory address what if we instead used another instruction so for example something like LDM and this is immediate addressing you'll learn once again more about these in the future so LDM I'm going to put a hash symbol right there, 103. So what that hash symbol indicates is basically it tells the computer, the assembler, that whatever follows is written in decimals. So convert this to binary. And aside from the this hash symbol, there are a number of other symbols as well that indicate to the assembler what kind of operand it is. So for example, uh, right now we just talked about the hash. This tells assembler that it's a decimal number then there is also capital b this indicates that the following operand is a binary number and finally an ampersand so something just that's a bad ampersand oops an ampersand like this uh, indicates that the operand is a hex operand right so that was all about the operand now, lastly, let's talk about a few concepts as well as terminology that you need to know for this for this chapter. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this. Right now, we're going to talk about uh, macros as well as directives. So these are two different things. Um, they're not related. I mean, they're both in the assembly language. They both relate to assembly language, but they're not otherwise related uh, macros are a group of instructions so these are essentially a group of instructions if you're familiar with um, you know general programming you would recognize this, this as a function so macros are a group of instructions that are given an identifier name variable name something you can call them and these are often instructions that need to be executed often so let's say I have uh, instruction A, B, C, and D that I need to execute many times in my program. So it would be a waste if I had to write those instructions every time I needed to execute them. Instead, what I can just do is I can, let's say A, B, C, and D are my instructions. I can give it, um, I can make it into a macro and call it my macro. I've given, uh, given it an identifier name. Now, whenever in my assembly language program, I need to uh, execute these exact instructions in this exact order. All I have to do, instead of writing A, B, C, D, all I have to do is call my macro. So this is essentially the same functionality that functions provide in other high level programming languages. So that was macros, a group of instructions. So yeah, now for directives. Directives are basically, uh, you can think of them as notes that the programmer writes. So these are notes that the programmer writes for the assembler. Programmer writes for the assembler. What is the assembler? The assembler is the translator that converts assembly language programs uh, into binary code. So for the assembler. And this doesn't uh, you know these directives don't carry all the way over to the processor what that means is uh, when you write a note when you write a note to the assembler you basically the programmer for example tells the assembler that 
um, this is my program and he writes a note let's say over here okay here import the code in some other file so I don't want to write all the code right here but when you translate the program what you should do is you could you should take the code from this other file that I've written at some other memory location and put it here and so the assembler does that and those are basically what directives or what are some sometimes also known as assembler directives are right so that brings us to the end of the introduction to assembly language video i'm hope you, uh, hoping you learned something uh, and uh, we'll learn more in the next video thank you for watching